Okay, okay, guys. Um, so I was doing a recording, and a phone call came in. I don't know why it doesn't stop me from receiving calls when I'm doing a recording. That's isn't that odd? Okay, so this guy said, "I tested your spirit regarding the Trinity, and you have an answer." So Trinity is found nowhere in the Bible, but people love to believe the Trinity, and it's the reason the Trinity was invented is because it wants to make the flesh, which the Bible clearly says God's a spirit, and spirits don't have flesh and bones. If they they want they they want to not make a distinguishment between. God, who's a spirit, who comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, because God comes in the likeness of all of us, all of us who are born again. If God's working in you, God's saying you're no longer the flesh, but it's God that worketh in you. And it's not the work of your flesh. It's the work of the spirit, because people aren't born again because you had sex with them. It's very obvious that people are born again because they believe the word of God, the incorruptible word of God. Uh, one plant is one water. God give the increase. And when they believe it, that word is fruitful and it multiplies and their new creatures created where? Is it a new creature created uh, outside of Christ? No, it's a new creature. Any man being Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. So the righteousness and all of those who are born again are born again in God, in his word. And there's many who are born again in his word. So that's a us. That word is fruitful. Be fruitful and multiply. One planteth, one water, but God giveth the increase. That word is fruitful. That word is like a, what? a tree of what? Life that brings forth incorruptible fruit that never perishes. None shall pluck them from my what? Hand. So that's what the Bible is explaining. And it's God who's doing it. It's God that's working in us. All right. So that's what he's talking about. So he's saying that uh, let us make man in our image. He says if God is one person, he's explaining that he doesn't believe God is, is one. He doesn't really believe there's truly one God. That's what the guy is saying. Even though it says God is a spirit and, and he says a spirit hath not flesh and bones. And then 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says the things which are seen are temporal. Now, people saw the man, the mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. But there is also God, Jesus, who is a spirit. And there's all of us who are sealed and sanctified in Christ. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Sanctify me by thy word. Thy word is truth. Being found in what? Him. Notice it says being found in him, having not mine own righteousness. It doesn't say being found in them. Being found in him, not them. Now, he's saying he's trying to tell me that I have a heresy. And then uh, I guess... Mature Michelle was going back and forth with him. So I'm going to go down and cut to the chase. Let us is referring to all the saints who have God in them, right? It says it's God that worketh in you to do it in the will of his good pleasure. So all of us who are born again, baptized into Christ, we have God as God that worketh in you to do it in the will of his good pleasure. It is not the works of our flesh. It's the work of the spirit. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. That was born of flesh is flesh. That was born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Not a corruptible seed. He that soweth into the flesh shall love the flesh. Reap corruption. He that soweth into the spirit shall love the spirit. Reap life everlasting. The wind blows where it listeth. Now hear the sound thereof. But canst not tell from whence it cometh to where it goeth. So is all those who are born by the what? Spirit. God is called the Father of spirits. We are the circumcision of the portion of God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the what? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Children of the flesh are an enmity with God. Okay? So it's telling us this. It says, because all those who are born again are made in the heavenly image of God, who says do works which were finished from the foundation of the world. He said he had chosen us where we're chosen in him. But if you're in him, if any man be in Christ, that's talking about the body, which is the bride. You know, how you typically you have a husband, you have a wife and then they have children. It's like be fruitful and multiply. Well, he's not talking about be fruitful and go have sex and multiply because you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. His sheep never perish. All flesh perishes. He's called the father of spirits and spirits don't have flesh and bones. It's very clear, right? And plus the things which are seen, 2 Corinthians 4, 18, are temporal. So if you can see it, that means it's temporal. You can prove this, guys. Anything you see that you see the Bible saying is temporal, you can prove this out. All right? Anything that you can see is temporal. So you shouldn't have to fear death. Because if, you know, these people who say, oh, you know, I'm God's chosen, whatever, then why do you fear death? Because he says, my sheep never perish. Remember the guy who said, I'm the lost sheep of the household of Israel? He says, you're not my sheep. I know my sheep. I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. He says, you, because you believe not, you're not my sheep. Meaning, you're not born again. You're like that guy, Nicodemus. He doesn't understand. He's like, can a man go enter again into his mother, mother's womb? It's very silly. He's talking about, can I, should I be born again carnally? Well, don't you get the point of Jacob and Esau? They were twin brothers. So it can't be about the flesh. There must be something. It must be from faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. You got to believe the gospel. You must be born again, Nicodemus. So it says it's because all those who are born again are made in the heavenly image. I said that. 
1 Corinthians 15, 49. As we have borne the image of the earthly, earthly meaning the form man was formed from the dust of the earth, and when a person doesn't receive the gospel, what are you supposed to do? You knock the dust off your feet because they remain a child of the flesh. And you say, look, your flesh, your house, your temple, your body, your tabernacle, it will perish. It will not stand. It will go back to the dust and lay thee even with the ground. Thy and thy children in thee will all die. Right? That's the curse. And it says, of his own will, listen, begot he. Notice it says, of his own will begot he. His own will begot he, us. You're wondering where the plural is? Well, God is the spirit and we must be born again by him who's the head. He is the head, the savior of the body. And it's talking about a spiritual body in this case. See, the man Jesus Christ died for every man. Well, guess what? Now they don't have to keep the law. But are they eternal? Do they have eternal salvation? Eternal salvation is only given when you're born again with the spirit. So what does it profit you? If you don't believe the gospel, if you say, well, the gospel is foolish. I don't believe it, blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't get the spirit until after you heard and believe the gospel, your salvation, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So the people who don't believe the gospel, those people aren't born again, Nicodemus, and they must be born again, Nicodemus. And because they're not born again, Nicodemus, you're not a child of God because Nicodemus, the children of the flesh, these are not children of God. Children of the promise are counted for the seed. And the promise that he's given us is eternal life. And everything that you can see is temporal because everything that can be seen, can be destroyed. It's, it's, it's destructible. He's called the father of spirits and spirits don't have flesh and bones. So we, Nicodemus, are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice where? In Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Right? And rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. No confidence in the flesh. Now the Bible also says, ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwelling in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of who? Christ, he's none of his. Well, wait a minute. Spirit of Christ. A spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. So which one was the mediator between God and man? Which one could be seen, could be touched, could be handled, whose beard could be plucked, who could wear a crown of thorns, who could perish? That would be the man, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Which one is eternal given that the things which are not seen are eternal? Well, it says we've been all made to drink of that spiritual rock and that rock that followed them is Christ. So it's explained that there's two lines. There's a line of the children of the flesh. And then there's a line, which is an eternal line, which are born again by the incorruptible word of God that liveth and abideth. It's the spirit that beareth witness, the spirit of truth. It's the spirit that quickeneth, that giveth life to flesh, profiteth nothing. He that soweth unto this flesh shall love the flesh reap corruption. He that's born of the spirit can, won't perish. They won't perish. They're born of incorruptible seed by the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. So the Bible is explaining that very clearly, guys. And so of his own will be God, he us with the word, which is the seed, the word of God that liveth and abideth forever, born again by the incorruptible word of truth. It's the spirit that breath witness, the spirit of truth that we see. That's the plural should be a kind of first fruits. That's a be fruitful and multiply of his that's singular creature he is the head the savior of the body sanctify me by thy word thy word is true god loves his own word he loves truth see he that loveth his wife loveth himself god doesn't hate his own body and we're sealed and sanctified born again by his own by his word and since it says let god be true and every man to be a liar all men are liars and all men are outside of christ so we who are born again by his incorruptible word sealed and sanctified by him being found in him, having not mine own righteousness, being found in him, not them. So of his own will be God, he, us, with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So when it says, let us create man in our image, well, it's God that worketh in us and we give the gospel. And when people believe it, they're new creatures created where? In the body of Christ, Nicodemus, you must be born again, be fruitful and multiply. That's the us, because it's God that worketh in us to do and to will of his good pleasure. And the man, people who are born again, they're created in the what image? The earthy, the temporal, or the heavenly, the spiritual. The Bible goes on to say, is God the, well, it says, is God the work is in us. So let us create man. That's talking about people being born again in our image, not the earthy, but the heavenly. And in Philippians 2, 13, it says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of, look, his, not there, 
goodwill and pleasure. So I know these guys love confusion. They want to teach that Trinity really bad because they want to teach that the flesh, there's a group of people who are God's children or chosen people according to the flesh. And now they want to add a color and then they're going to say, well, they're a chosen race and they're going to rule and reign in this world and all this kind of stuff. And now the Bible becomes a lie and God becomes a respected person. No, uh, Jacob and Esau, they both could have believed. Jacob, Jacob believed uh, Esau had no respect to the gospel and because Esau rejected the word, the gospel, the gospel truth, Esau wasn't born again. It's not that God failed. You know who failed? Esau, his heart failed him. He, he From faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. He believed not. As Jesus told the one guy, you, you're not my sheep. You believe not, you're not my sheep. I've given to my sheep eternal life. They never perish. All flesh perishes, guys. So it says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure 1 Corinthians 15, 44, it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. People are confused because they're like, well, but I can still see your physical body. Well, guys, how would you expect uh, God to do it? For if you once you believe the gospel, even though it says you're a new creature, you still have your flesh, though you're no longer a child of the flesh. This is why the Bible says ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling enough. Any man have the spirit of Christ. He's none of his. The Bible is saying, like, look, what you've done is almost like you've borrowed the, 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 the wardrobe of, of a Gentile, of a person. Like, we, we have these filthy garments, and that's why it says um, saving some with fear, pulling them from the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Stephen William Stone called upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Meaning, he left his filthy garment, the flesh. He says, like, this flesh, which is seen, which is temporal, which is corrupt, stays right here because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Children of the flesh are not children of God in this world because we have a heavenly kingdom, an eternal kingdom, which you cannot enter, Nicodemus, unless you're born again. Not a corruptible seed, not of flesh, not of sperm. This is the point, guys, of the circumcision, which they don't seem to know what it means anymore. What did the circumcision signify? Why would men get snipped? It was to signify that they knew it wasn't of their corrupt seed because it says in the Bible, he that soweth unto his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. And it clearly says the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Why is that confusing? Why do people think that when they have sex with their wife that they're having children of God? This is the basis for all this lying and discrimination and racism, this made up lie of race. And they're using this lie of, oh, we must remain pure and the pure race and the this and that and we're God's chosen race and we need to be pure and not mixed with the so-called blah, blah, blah. You know, like, what are you talking about? Didn't you descend from Adam and Eve? And this is why I did the other video showing you about the science falsely so-called that they were saying that, well, look, they don't actually believe that everybody descended from Adam and Eve in one scenario. They think, well, man with the, the so-called dark skinned people came from a separate group, like a separate line or actually of the beast. Then they say, well, there's also, you know, the whole story uh, about, uh, uh, I think, uh, was it, was it uh, Noah's son? And they said, well, one of them went and he looked and blah, blah. He was a greater sinner than his brothers. So God cursed him and made him a servant. And you notice in that story, he's talking about being exposing his, his father's or, or pointing out his father's nakedness. But this is just like the woman who's caught in adultery. When you're trying to expose someone's nakedness, but all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And if you offended one part of the law, you offended all. So what nakedness are you exposing, given that all or nobody's going to be justified by the law? What nakedness is there, are they talking about? Because God is saying, don't, when I say someone saved, when I say they're born again, whether it be the woman in adultery, whether it be uh, Noah who's drunk, whether it be whatever, he's saying, look, you're looking at the old man. You don't understand the truth of the matter, that they're no longer that creature. That's why Paul said, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Paul is disassociating himself with his old man. This is why the Bible said he that forsaketh his house, his lands, his father, his mother, his sisters, his brothers, his wife, his self, for, for his namesake. He basically, the Bible is saying when you're born again, you're no longer of this world. Which people got the bumper sticker, but they don't seem to know what it means. So it's saying, look. For it is God that worketh in you both to do and to will of his good pleasure. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. What do you mean? A spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. Well, we still have our flesh because think about how that would be as far as the world's concerned. If you just believed and you were gone, no one would need to have faith. 
So God knows how to do it. God said, look, you're going to be here and you're going to finish going out preaching. You received the free gift. Now that you've received the free gift, go out and preach the word to other people. So they can be saved by grace through faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And since it's got to be by faith, then they're just going to have to believe that you're born again and that it's not you who are giving them the word. It's actually God working in you to do into will of his good pleasure. You're to be a light to the, to the world. And who's the light that's in you? Well, God is the light. He's the light that lighteth every man, right? The light came into the world in darkness, comprehended or not. God is light and in him is no what? Darkness. That's why we're called the children of light. But that's why this world is called the world of darkness. And it said light had no communion with darkness. It's why Jesus said, I pray not for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me. How be it that that was not first was which, uh, how be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is what? Spiritual. Stephen when the stone called upon God, called upon God. He called upon who? God saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And Jesus is God, but God is a spirit. But there's also the media between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, whom you could see. Things which are seen are temporal. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, this is let, let us create man in our image. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a let us create. We go out, we preach the word in season, out of season. What are we doing? Why are we preaching the word in season? Why is it talking about seasons? Why is it talking about seed? A seed. Why is it talking about fruit? Why is it talking about water? Why is it talking about planting? We're not planting things in this corrupt earth. We're not born of this corrupt earth. We're not born from the dust of the earth. Dust was a man formed. Back to dust will I go. All flesh will perish and go back to the dust. This is written. It's saying that, look, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So let us, let us, let the body of Christ, let us who have God working in us to do into will of his good pleasure, let us preach the word so people can be new creatures created in Christ. Let us be born again in the heavenly image and not in the earthly image. Let us create man in our image. But it's God that worketh in us to do and to will of his good pleasure, being found in him, having not my own righteousness. So guess who does the work? God does the work. That's why the Bible says the works that I do, ye do also, and greater works than these shall you do. Right? So that's what the Bible is explaining. Right? It says it's the self-same spirit that worketh all in all. The self-same spirit that worketh all in all. And it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into how many bodies, guys? How many bodies? One body. And how many heads are there? Saviors of the body. One. And why does the Bible says to the king eternal? Look, to the king immortal, to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the what? Only wise God. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. Where is it glorifying the flesh? Why is it being glorified when you die to the flesh? You ever notice that? Dying to the flesh is, is it's glorifying when you die to the flesh because the flesh, you're putting off the filthiness of the flesh. All right. I'm believing that that look, God's a spirit. And look, you, all you got to do is believe the gospel. God is saying, look, when you believe you're born again, you're a new creature created in Christ. It's got nothing to do with your flesh. It's not like your mom and dad say, hey, mom and dad, I need to be born again. Could you guys go have sex and then I can come again out of mama's womb? No, that it's, it's silly, guys. So it's saying you're born again. You're born again by believing the gospel, believing the word, which is the seed. And you got to mix that seed with faith. You hear it today. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Is it me speaking? No, it says since you seek a proof of who's speaking in me. Christ speaking in me. It's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. So when you believe that gospel, that Christ, the mediator, died for our sins, he was buried, he rose again. God, who's the spirit, named Jesus, he was quickened by the spirit, raised him from the dead. Why? To put the devil to an open shame. Say, hey, look, I have the power over death. Nonetheless, the children of the flesh are not children of God. And you have the flesh for the purposes of what? You got a mission here. You, you're a stranger to this world now, you, but you're an ambassador to a to an eternal kingdom. And you're going out and you're telling people, preaching the word, saying, hey, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's an eternal kingdom, but it, it's an eternal kingdom which can't be seen because the things which are not seen are eternal. So it come not with observation, but you got to you got to receive it by faith. It's at hand. It's right there. Lo, I stand at the door and knock. But if you harden your heart, right, if you harden your heart and don't believe, well, then Nicodemus, you'll stay right here. Well, then Esau, I guess you're just going to die in your sins. I guess you're just you're going to stay in your temple. And guess what? In the time you realize that your house is uh, corrupt 
and, and, and it's going to be left desolate, then it's too late. Because, hey, you should, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. See, God is here now. Who's, how are you getting saved if he's not here now? But they're teaching us that we need to wait and they want us to wait for a certain person to appear of a certain color to fulfill a certain thing for a heaven, for an earthly kingdom. That's what it's all about, guys. But uh, you believe the gospel. It's a free gift, not a works. Once you believe that gospel, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scripture. You believe on God for salvation, eternal salvation. You, it can't be lost for no, for no reason at all. Nothing. Your flesh, your life of your flesh has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with your new creature. Because remember, your new creature created in Christ and it's being found in him, having not mine own righteousness. All right. You have the righteousness of God. And that and that's a good thing, because otherwise you'd be depending on your so-called works. But all your works are as filthy rags. All right. Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.